Welcome back guys. Our today's problem is write a program to convert a Roman number to a decimal number. Input format is take a Roman number and output format is print the decimal number. And for example, if our input is XVII, then the output will be 17. So first let's discuss about Roman numbers. Roman numbers are I, V, X, L, C, D, M where I represents 1, V represents 5, X represents 10, L represents 50, C represents 100, D represents 500 and M represents 1000. So in Roman numbers we have only these characters. You can remember them by I, V, X, L, C, D, M. Okay. So let's discuss some rules for Roman numbers. The first rule says that when a smaller symbol is after a greater symbol, then it's added. For example, if we have V, I, V represents 5 and I represents 1. So these numbers will be added because 5 is greater than 1 and 5 is coming before 1 so they will be added okay the next rule says that if a symbol comes after itself then it is added for example xx so x means 10 and if we have xx then we'll add 10 and 10 so xx represents 20 similarly ii represents 2 because i represents 1 and i i means 1 plus 1 that is 2 the third rule says that whenever a smaller symbol appears before a greater symbol then it is subtracted for example i v we write 4 in roman number as i v right and i means 1 and v means 5 so i comes before v where i is less than v so we subtract i from v means 5 minus 1 that is 4 similarly if we have i x then we do 10 minus 1 that is 9 and for x l x means 10 and L means 50 so here also 10 comes before 50 so we'll do 50 minus 10 that will be 40 okay the fourth rule is the same symbol cannot be used more than three times in a row so we usually write 3 as I I I and we write 4 as I V and not I I I I okay so this is a rule that if we have a symbol three times then we cannot write more than that so for four we don't write i i i i we write i v similarly we can write x x x for 30 but not x x x x for 40 we have to write x l for 40 okay so these were some rules for roman numbers now let's apply them to code we will here firstly use hash map the keys of the hash map will be the romans in uppercase as well as in lowercase and the value of the hash map will be the corresponding value of the romans so we'll use here lowercase as well as uppercase All right so according to rule number one when we have smaller symbol after a greater symbol then we'll simply add them so we have xi so x is 10 and i is 1 so the corresponding value will be 10 plus 1 that is 11. now according to rule number two if a symbol comes after itself then we'll simply add so if we have xx and x means 10 so we'll simply add 10 
so 10 plus 10 that will be 20 now rule 3 says that when a smaller symbol appears before a greater symbol then it is subtracted so we have your smaller symbol before greater symbol like iv so i represents 1 and v represents 5 so 1 is less than 5 so we'll subtract 1 from 5 that is 5 minus 1 that is equal to 4 so iv is equal to 4 Similarly for XL, we have the value of X as 10 and L is 50, so 10 is less than 50, so we'll do 50 minus 10, that is equal to 40. So XL is equal to 40. Now according to rule number 4, the same symbol cannot be used more than three times in a row. We can have at max only three symbols in a row. So for writing three, we use triple I. And for writing four, we don't use quadruple I. Instead, we use IV. So this rule number four will be dependent on the input. And we are assuming here that we don't have such inputs. We only have valid inputs. So we have to consider only rule number 1, 2 and rule number 3. Okay. So here we'll create a hash map and a helper variable sum to store the sum. So let's see this in code. We have a similar problem in Geeks for Geeks. So this is the question and here the values of Romans are also given. So let's write. We'll first create hash map. Hash map of character comma integer map equal to new hash map. And we'll put all the values of Romans and their corresponding values in hash map with uppercase as well as in lowercase. So we have IV, XL, CDM both in uppercase as well as in lowercase. Now we'll create the sum variable int sum equal to 0. And now I'll iterate on the string. So for int i equal to 0, i less than str dot length, i plus plus. So according to rule 3, if we have value at i less than value at i plus 1 then we'll subtract so if and I'll create a variable char c equal to str dot caret i to store the value of current character so we have to check the condition if i plus 1 is less than length of string otherwise at the last character it will give us null pointer exception so i'll first check if i plus 1 is less than str dot length so come inside and if map dot get c is greater than or equal to map dot get str dot caret i plus 1 so if our current character is greater than our next character then we'll simply add the value of that character in sum variable so sum plus equal to map dot get c and if this is not the case if our current character is less than the next character then we'll subtract the values of those characters and add them in the sum variable as well so sum plus equal to map dot get str dot caret i plus 1 minus map dot get c and I have subtracted this character from the next character so I'll increase the value of i so i plus plus and else 
If we don't have any of these cases, we'll simply add the value of that character to the sum variable. So sum plus equal to map.getc and we'll return sum. Mm, okay, now let's review the code. Okay, this return statement is inside for loop. We have some bracket issues. So I'll cut it and paste it out of it. Okay. Okay, so let's compile and run the code. Queuing, ready for evaluation. Okay, for input V, your output is 5. So this output seems correct. Let's submit the code. See, our solution is accepted and your execution time is also given that is 0.13 seconds. Okay. Okay. So that's it for this video. We'll see more problems in the further videos. Thank you.